okay so Uh, let's get started. Today I want to continue our discussion about augmented Lagrangian method. Uh, in particular, I want to go through a few examples, uh, just like we did in the barrier method to show you how exactly augmented Lagrangian method works and why do we see the, the results uh, the way they are. Uh, so not, not I mean, so what I'm going to do is just consider an example go through the example very carefully, show you how the proofs are done uh, for a specific class of problems and, uh, and then of course we won't go through the actual proof of uh, why the augmented Lagrangian method converges. Okay? So we'll just look at it through an example and the example is as follows. Uh, throughout this class we will consider this very simple example. So x is in R2, x is in R2, x1 is its first component, x2 is its second component and my constraint is h of x equals to x1 minus 1 equals to 0, okay. I mean this is, uh, this is quite, a, quite an easy problem. Uh, and I have picked up this problem in the book, so you can also take a look at it in the book, uh, but but I will go through everything very carefully. So what is my L of x comma lambda? So that is half x1 square plus half x2 square plus lambda x1 minus 1, okay. Uh, this is a convex problem by the way, right. This is linear constraint and this is a strictly convex objective function. So it has a unique solution and uh, what would be satis um, what would Lagrangian satisfy at the optimal point? So at x star lambda star the gradient with respect to x will be equal to 0. So that is x1 plus lambda x2 this is equal to 0 x1 star, x2 star, okay. And the other constraint is h of x star is equal to 0, which means x1 star is equal to 1. So we have, we have three equations, this equal to 0, this equal to 0, and this h of x star equals to 0. So we have three equations, three unknowns, x1 star, x2 star, and lambda star, we can solve it and it is x1 star equals to 1, x2 star equals to 0 and lambda star equals to negative 1, okay. This is my solution to this problem. This is the general method for solving a problem using Lagrange multiplier method. You have objective function, you have constraints, you write the Lagrangian, you de uh, take the derivative with respect to x, uh, you look at the constraints, okay. And so if you look at the number of equations you get, uh, this is the number of, uh, number of equations you get from this expression is equal to n which is the dimension of x and the number of expression you get with respect to this constraint is the same as the number of Lagrange multipliers. So you have any n plus m equations and n plus m unknowns and you can solve it uh, to get the optimal solution. Okay, And since it is convex, we know that this is indeed the only optimal solution uh, in the problem for this particular problem. Okay, Any question about that, that method? No questions? Okay, let us look at the augmented Lagrangian LC of x comma lambda. What is that equal to? Half x1 square plus half x2 square plus lambda 
x1 minus 1 plus c over 2 x1 minus 1 square. Okay, c is a positive number. Lambda can take can, lambda can have any sign negative, positive, it doesn't matter. C has to be a strictly positive number. C is greater than zero. What is the gradient of x at L C? That's x1 plus lambda plus C x1 minus 1 and then x2 equals to 0. So at x star lambda star this is equal to 0. So let me put star here. So what do I get? I get x1 star equals to lambda star minus c over lambda star plus 1 okay and x2 star is equal to 0. What did I do? This is the way to solve it using KKT conditions. Okay. Now I say that well, I'm going to consider an augmented Lagrangian, and I will solve. I will try to minimize L of c with respect to x for a given value of lambda. Okay. So what I get is x1 star. Well, you know this lambda star and this lambda star is different. So maybe I should write it as x tilde and not x star because these two are completely different problems. So let me write it as lambda, uh, sorry, as x1 tilde and lambda tilde so that way there is no confusion. x1 tilde, lambda tilde. Did I make a mistake? I did. C minus lambda tilde. Sorry? Oh, C plus 1, yeah. Okay, everyone is awake in the class. Well, it just started, so everyone has to be awake. Uh, okay, so this is, this is what I get. This is the solution to this optimization problem where I'm considering augmented Lagrangian. Okay, and I'm minimizing LC with respect to X for a given value of lambda equals to lambda tilde. Now my question is, remember I had, when I was talking about uh, this augmented Lagrangian method, there were two ways to solve this problem. One method is when lambda is very close to lambda tilde, right? That was the first method. And the second method was my C is very, very high. Okay, So those are the two methods. So let's consider the case where lambda tilde is very close to lambda star. What do I get? What does this mean? What is lambda star? Lambda star is negative 1. So what is my x1 tilde approximately equal to? C minus or C plus 1 over C plus 1 equals to 1. Okay? That's not surprising, right? If my lambda, if my lambda here is close to lambda, so if my lambda tilde here is close to lambda star, no matter what the value of C is, okay? All you need to know is C is greater than 0. No matter what the value of C is, your x1 tilde is still very close to the optimal solution, which is equal to 1. Okay? x2 star doesn't change. x2 star doesn't depend on lambda. So x2 tilde is equal to 0. Okay? So if lambda tilde is close to lambda star, 
you minimize the augmented Lagrangian, you get the solution to the first, to the original optimization problem. So that was the first approach. Second approach, I will take lambda tilde is arbitrary, but I will take c going to infinity. What do I have? x1 tilde equals to limit c going to infinity, c minus lambda tilde over c plus 1. What is this equal to? 1, right? And my x2 tilde is equal to 0. Okay, so both these uh, ideas work in this particular example. What are the ideas? I want to solve this problem, but instead of solving this problem, I will solve this problem. Okay, I want to minimize the augmented Lagrangian for a given value of lambda. And lambda, I have to choose what lambda is. So what I do is, I pick a value of lambda that is close to lambda star of the original problem. How do I know? Well, I don't really know. Okay, I just pick the value of lambda, lambda tilde, and I start optimizing this objective function. And it so turns out that if lambda tilde is close to lambda star, I will get the original solution without any problem. Okay. The second idea is. Well, you know what? I don't really know what the value of lambda is in this problem. I mean, it's a very horrible looking problem. I just, I, there's no way I will be able to ever get an estimate of what lambda star is going to be. So let me just take C going to infinity. Okay, let, let me just pick a value of C that's very, very large. And if I do that, no matter what the value of lambda tilde I pick, my solution would still be the optimal solution in the limit. Okay, as I take the value of c very, very large. Those were the two ideas that we discussed in the previous class. Okay. The third idea that we had discussed was method of method of multipliers, in which we said that you know what, let's update lambda k according to lambda k plus 1 equals lambda k plus c k h x k, where x k is the argument of L c, L c, L c k x lambda k. Okay, so this was my method of multiplier. Let's take x to be Rn for the time being, even though there is no loss of generality if you replace Rn with some sort of convex set x. What am I doing here? Well, at every point of time, I pick a value of lambda k. Well, I pick a value of lambda k, I pick a value of ck, which is sufficiently large. I solve this minimization problem using gradient descent or Newton's method or whatever. I get a value of xk. I plug it in here. I update the value of lambda k plus 1 in this fashion. I pick a value of ck plus 1, which is higher than ck. And I rerun this entire optimization problem using gradient descent or Newton's method and so on. Okay. And what I had sort of mentioned uh, without giving you a proof that actually lambda k would converge to lambda star and x k would converge to x star. Okay? Under, under some sufficient conditions. Okay? What were those sufficient conditions? Well, you want x star to be regular and you wanted all the functions to be smooth, you wanted L to be L to satisfy some constraints. What was the constraint on L? I don't seem to recall. 
oh you stop your uh, when you are running your iterations you want the gradient of x you want your gradient with respect to x of lck goes to at xk and lambda k goes to 0 as k goes to infinity okay this was another condition that we had imposed on our numerical method so in this class for this particular problem let me show you how i can prove this result okay this is the result i want to prove let me show you how i can prove this result and for the purpose of this lecture we'll keep ck equals constant and we'll take ck going to infinity we'll cover both the cases so these methods always hold true this one all three of them are always yes okay. they they always hold true Uh, I mean, just visual, like visually taking the limit, it usually seems to be an like easier case to solve in this case. Yes, it will be an easier case to solve, but uh, but you see when your C is very, very large, let's say you take your value of C very, very large, you essentially end up solving this problem and these problems won't really affect the overall minimization problem sometimes it might work well so you see the way the reason why you use so so the idea is you let c go to infinity somewhat slowly okay so that you don't get into this problem of this term completely ignoring the main function that you want to actually optimize okay but of course the method of multiplier seems to be much better as compared to this because because in this case since you are updating the value of lambda k, right, you will end up converging much faster as compared to this case where you are just changing the value of c k as k goes to infinity. Any other question? Okay, so the goal for the next 20 minutes is to prove that method of multiplier would converge to lambda star and x star. Okay. So my lambda k plus one is lambda k the c k h x k. Uh, should I x k comma one minus one? Okay, and my xk is ck minus lambda k over ck plus 1 and 0. Okay, so what is my, uh, so let me get, let me substitute xk1, so this is my xk1. So let me substitute it here. So what do I get? I get lambda k plus 1 equals lambda k plus c k gives me lambda k plus c k.
so I get uh, lambda k plus 1 is equal to lambda k plus c k minus c k lambda k plus 1 over c k plus 1. Oh, there is still uh, it can further it can be simplified further because we can take collect all the lambda k terms together and what we get is When is this sequence of lambda k plus 1 convergent? So the question is when is, so under what conditions on C, under what conditions on C k will this sequence of lambda k converge. Okay, so what am I doing? I'm just trying to get so with all this. Uh, uh, substitution all I wanted to do was get lambda k plus 1 purely as a function of lambda k and I was successful in doing so I got lambda k plus 1 as a function of lambda k and some constant okay and my question is this looks like an equation where you have z k plus 1 equals a z k plus b my question is when is the sequence convergent when is zk going to converge to some limit? Any thoughts? Monotonic decreasing, okay. Uh, how will you prove that this is monotonically decreasing and bounded? Okay, let's. Uh, no, let's, yeah. Well, they won't have the same value, right? Because you multiply zk with a and then you add b. So zk plus 1, if they are convergent, yes, in the limit they will have the same value. Okay. So my question is when is the sequence going to converge? Sorry? Sorry? Yes. B equals 0. Uh, well, in this case, B is not equal to 0, so you can't. <laughs> That's not useful. Uh, no, in this case CK goes to infinity, so this goes to 1 or negative 1. Well, you see, when is the sequence going to convert? O okay, let me, let me write it from the very beginning. Let's say my Z0 is given. Okay, so I have Z1 equals A Z0 plus B. I have Z2 equals A square or A A z naught plus b plus b which is equal to a square z naught plus a b plus b my z3 if you do the same if you go through the same expression you have a cube z naught plus a square b plus a b 
plus b and so on okay so what i'm saying is as you let this k go to infinity when will this part converge to a unique value sorry if a is less than 1 so if if absolute value of a was less than 1 then this term will go to 0 so let me write it here so my absolute value of a is less than 1 so and my zn is given by a raised to n z naught plus summation a raised to i b i equals 0 to n minus 1 okay so if my a is strictly less than 1 no matter what the value of z naught is my zn would converse to 0 plus summation of a raised to i b i equals 0 to infinity what is this equal to b over b over 1 minus a right this is a geometric series so that's what the sum would turn out to be okay so Megan you understood this okay everyone understood this part okay so if a was strictly less than 1 then this sequence is going to converge so let's go back to this original equation lambda k plus 1 is equal to some something multiplied by lambda k minus some other number when is this term going to converge well when 1 over ck plus 1 is strictly less than 1 which is when ck is strictly greater than 0 okay so let's let's do two things so k ck is constant in which case lambda k plus 1 equals lambda k over c plus 1 minus c over c plus 1 and as long as so if c is greater than 0 the sequence lambda k converges okay so let's say lambda k converges to lambda bar okay uh, what i don't know yet okay all i have done is well let me take ck to be a constant for all time steps all i know is that you know by the property by this property i know that this lambda k converges to some value okay this lambda bar may or may not be lambda star so we need to check so so let's check so lambda bar will be equal to lambda bar over c plus 1 minus c over c plus 1 this implies lambda bar 1 minus 1 over c plus 1 lambda bar equals negative 1 equals lambda star okay so this sequence indeed converts to the optimal solution it converts to lambda star now what happens when ck is going to infinity what would we see in this process
any thoughts? What happens when I'm taking CK going to infinity? Well, you see in this case, the rate of convergence depends on what the value of A is. If A is very, very small, then it's going to converge very fast. If A is very, very large, it's going to converge slowly. In this case, if your C is constant, then your rate of convergence is constant. But if you make your CK grow as K goes to infinity, then you are increasing the rate of convergence. Okay, so you get to lambda bar pretty quickly and as soon as you get to lambda bar pretty quickly you you looked at the case where lambda tilde so we looked at the case case one where if lambda tilde was equal to lambda star then x tilde was close to x star right so if your lambda k converges to lambda bar pretty quickly because you are increasing the value of CK with every iteration, then your lambda tilde will be close to lambda star. And if you compute X tilde, which was argmin of the augmented Lagrangian, remember X tilde was argmin of LCK X lambda K. If your lambda K is close to lambda, uh, close to lambda star, then no matter what the value of CK is, you will be very close to the optimal value. Okay, So that's what you are doing when you increase the value of CK as K goes to infinity. Does that explanation make sense? Okay. So what's the outcome? What, what exactly did we study? What we said is, well, if you update your lambda k in a specific fashion, which is this one, and you increase, and you, you keep the value of c constant, you don't increase the value of ck, you would still converse to the optimal, optimal Lagrange multiplier, and therefore you will get the optimal solution to the original problem without any issue. But if you increase the value of ck, you will get to the optimal solution much faster. Okay, so, so I want to write it formally here. So the upshot CK constant, so, so this upshot is for method of multipliers. CK equals to constant, you still converge, but converge slowly. CK going to infinity, you converge faster. Okay? That's what we did in this class. Any question? No? So in general, whenever you are solving an optimization problem of, of this type, you know what I want to do? I want to introduce Banach contraction mapping theorem, but I'm thinking whether I should wait for a few more classes or whether I should introduce it now. Uh, how many of you want to know what Banach contraction mapping theorem is? No one? <laughs> okay, so, well, you know, I'm disappointed. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so, uh, So in general, you know, in this case, of course, it was a scalar, lambda k was a scalar value. But in general, what you will have is, if you are, a, if you are solving a quadratic problem, 
with linear constraints in general you will get lambda k plus 1 as some matrix A multiplied by lambda k. Have we used A so far? No, yes, A is used. Give me a matrix. M, M, okay. M is a good matrix. M plus some vector V. We have not used V so far, right? Yeah, okay. So if lambda, so see this update equation, uh, we had only one constraint, so lambda k was a scalar, so this update equation looks like a scalar, uh, looks like a scalar equation. Uh, but in general, you can have multiple constraints, so lambda k plus 1 will be equal to a matrix M multiplied by lambda k plus V. Okay, this is what you will get if you're solving a quadratic problem with linear constraints, equality constraints. When do you know that this sequence will converge? Okay, so the fact is if a spectral radius, uh, how do I define spectral? So if rho of m is strictly less than 1, then lambda k converges to some lambda bar. Okay, and what is the spectral radius? rho of m equals to max over i of lambda i of m, absolute value. Okay, so that's one way uh, this sequence will converge. The other case is when you consider so, so this is one sufficient condition. There is another sufficient condition when your lambda max of m transpose m is less than 1. Okay, that's another sufficient condition. So you can substitute instead of rho m less than 1, you can substitute when lambda max m transpose m is less than 1, then lambda k converges to lambda bar. Okay, this is the maximum eigenvalue of m transpose m. Okay, so that will allow you, so in this case M was 1 over CK plus 1, okay, but in general M would be a matrix, so how would you know whether the sequence will converge or not? Well, you look at the spectral radius, which is the maximum of the absolute value of eigenvalues of M, and if it is less than 1, then you know for sure that lambda K is converging to, will converge to lambda bar. So what you have to do is this M would typically depend on the value CK. So you have to pick the value of CK large enough so that the spectral radius of M is strictly less than 1, after which the sequence will converge pretty fast. To okay. Okay, so if I lost my train of thought. <laughs> okay, so if you're, yeah, so if your maximum eigen, no, not maximum of the absolute values of eigenvalues of m is strictly less than 1? No, that wasn't what I was saying. <laughs> m depends on c, okay, m depends on c, and you have to pick a value of c such that the spectral radius of m is strictly less than 1, in which case you will converge to the, to the eigenvalue, lambda star. Okay, so that's how you prove convergence, and I'll give you a a problem in your next assignment where you have to prove that a variant of this method actually converges to the optimal solution. Okay, It's a slight variant of this method of multipliers method. Any question? Okay, I will introduce Banach contraction mapping theorem, okay, so don't feel happy that you got your way in this time through a democratic mean. Uh, now I want to talk about inequality constraint problem. In which the method of multiplier is applied as follows, you have lambda k plus 1 equals lambda k plus c k h x k 
and mu k plus 1 j is max of 0 and mu k j plus c k g j x k. Yeah. Okay, so this is how you would update the Lagrange multiplier corresponding to the inequality constraint. Okay, so this is uh, the way to update the Lagrange multiplier for inequality constraint problems. Now, I want to I want to uh, introduce a specific kind of problem. So I want to minimize f of x such that h of x is equal to zero, and a is less than equal to x is less than equal to b. X is in R n. Okay. Let's say somebody gave me this problem. You know what? The electricity market problem that you are solving is exactly this class of, exactly fits into this framework. Okay. So someone gave me this problem to solve, and I'm debating. So so what is it that I have to figure out? The first thing I have to figure out is whether I should treat it as an equality constraint problem over a box or I should treat it as a problem with equality and inequality constraints. Okay? So, so there are two options. So let me say my option one, I can Define the set X as X in Rn such that A is less than or equal to X is less than or equal to B. And I solve this problem as follows Xk is an argument LCK Xk lambda k X in capital X. Okay? We know how to solve a unconstrained minimization problem over a box, not unconstrained. We know how to solve a minimization problem over a box constraint set, right? And we update my lambda k plus one as lambda k plus c k h of x k. Okay, this is my option one. My option two is I take my x to be Rn itself, and then I solve, I treat it as a minus x less than or equal to 0, x minus b less than or equal to 0, so that gives me 2n inequality constraints, and I pick my xk to be argument of x in R n of L c k x lambda k mu k. Okay? And then lambda k plus 1 equals lambda k plus c k h x k Okay. Okay, so 
if someone gives you this problem, you have two ways to solve it. One is either you consider 2n inequality constraints, and then you introduce corresponding Lagrange multipliers, and then you solve this class of this kind of problem, keep updating the Lagrange multipliers, and so on. But remember, this is an unconstrained minimization problem. Okay? All you are doing is argument of x and rn. Option one is you have a code that solves any minimization problem in the box. Okay, So you have this code. Somebody gave it to you. So instead of introducing so many inequality constraints and keeping track of the Lagrange multipliers, you can all you can do is just solve this minimization problem in which all you have to update is the lambda k term, only the Lagrange multiplier corresponding to the equality constraint. And you don't have to keep track of mu k plus 1. Okay? But of course, this requires you to write a code that solves a minimization problem over a box constraint. Okay? You may have it, you may not have it. Okay? You may have this code, you may not have this code. But both the options are available. Both the options will give you the same result. Okay? So you can pick whichever option is your favorite. Uh, I won't actually give you any problem, but hopefully you will encounter something like this in your job or in your research. So, so that's the idea. So all you have to understand is how do you want to formulate the problem because if you formulate it this way, something might be easier, something might be difficult. If you formulate it this way, something might be difficult, but then updating the Lagrange multiplier is easy because you're not updating many Lagrange multipliers. Okay. Any question? Which one will be faster? I don't know. Okay. Uh, there's no way I can tell which one is faster in practice because it really depends from problem to problem. Okay. Questions? No? Everyone understood everything? Uh, well, that's all I have for today. Uh, have a good weekend. We'll meet next week on Monday.